And now our senior West Coast correspondent, John Ehrlichman, was tracking Groupon's IPO from a trading floor in San Francisco. He joins us now with more on how the day unfolded. John, big day. It was indeed, Emily, and the feeling on the floor was different than the day LinkedIn went public. Since Groupon announced its IPO plans, we've heard from plenty of skeptics, but that pessimism actually helped to make this an orderly stock market debut. Trading. On the third floor of Transamerica's Pyramid Building, the traders from Think Equity were as eager as everyone else to see Groupon's first trade. We want to know when uh, Groupon's going to open up. And Groupon makes yeah. its trading debut. As the broader markets opened, traders were still trying to match Groupon buyers and sellers. I saw some quotes uh, saying that they, they're going to open 55. It's North quite possible, but it's arbitrary at this point. Before trading began, that unknown was seen to some as a money-making opportunity. Yeah, would that be a shocker to you? I mean, if we went from a 20 IPO to a 55 open? Uh, it would not be a shock to me. Yeah. I mean, it, the euphoria starts to build. People get a little crazy, get a little nuts. They think the opportunity to make a quick buck. But the Groupon bears stayed close to the bulls. All right, so we just saw Groupon open, and the uh, price was, what, around 28 bucks? $28. 28 So in the pre-market, it was indicated to open around 30 initially, and then it came down. So that suggests what sellers were coming in yes. as we got close to the process. Okay. Exactly. And once retail investors had a chance to jump in, the bears seemed to be in the back of their mind. When they see the stock go up 40 percent, maybe that makes them think twice or take a breather or something like that? Uh, some, some will think twice, and others <laughs> will think, look at it as an opportunity to, uh, to go the other way on it. So. To go short? To go short. Yeah. Oh, okay. And people have talked a lot about how Groupon only sold a small number of shares, but they still made more stock available than LinkedIn. 35 million shares versus LinkedIn's 8 million, perhaps allowing for a little more of an equal balance between those buyers and the sellers. Emily?